finished school. Her mum was waiting at the gates with Jessie, the dog. Can we go to the park with Jaya, mum? said Katie. All right, we can go for half an hour, said mum. When they got to the park, Katie and Jaya ran towards the swings and slides. Come on, shouted Katie. Let's see how high we can go on the swings. You can't come in here, Jess, shouted Katie and Jaya. Mum took Jessie over to the bench and tied him to it. She sat down and started to read the paper. Did you have a nice time? Mum asked. Yes, it was brilliant. I went the highest, said Katie. No, I went the highest, said Jaya. Come on, we need to take you home, said Mum. That night, Jessie couldn't sleep. He was thinking about the park. Quietly, he got out of his basket and walked downstairs. He squeezed through the cat flap. He was outside. He ran towards the park. Soon Jessie was at the park. He walked towards the swings. The gate was open. He went through and looked around. The playground was full of dogs. Jessie climbed up the ladder, went down the slide, whizzed round on the roundabout, went up and down on the seesaw, bounced on the springy, and went up and down on the swing. Woof! barked Jessie. He went as high as he could on the swing. Soon it was time to go. Jessie got off the swing, went through the gate, and walked back home. He squeezed through the cat flap, walked upstairs, and got into his basket. He looked at Katie. I, I went, went the, the highest, thought Jessie, and went to sleep. A naughty young giant moved all the world's famous landmarks. People around the world were very confused. He put the pyramids in Paris, and on your left the... pyramids? He moved the Leaning Tower of Pisa to London. Here we can see the famous... Leaning Tower of London? He swapped the Sydney Opera House with Stonehenge. Hey, where are the stones, man? When his mum saw the newspaper, she was very angry. Kevin, go and put them back in the right place, you naughty boy. Yes, mum. So don't worry. If you go to London, Cairo, Pisa, or Paris today, you'll see all the landmarks in their correct place. Went to nursery school. Scraps, the dog, tossed the frightened Teddy around. Teddy landed in Mother's shopping bag. She went shopping. When she pulled out her purse, Teddy fell out into a shopping trolley. The trolley bounced poor Teddy straight into a bin. A lorry took the rubbish to the dump. Teddy was terrified. A huge bird carried him high in the sky. Suddenly, Teddy dropped, falling, falling. The post lady picked him up and took Teddy inside a building. They put him with the other toys. Soon Kumiko found him. How did you come to school? she asked. This is a small planet, Fliptune. It is dark and cold, far from the sun, behind a much bigger planet. Little green aliens live there. They use torches to see.
One day, a young alien, Neela, put the wrong batteries in her torch. Suddenly, there was a dazzling beam of light. It went up into the sky, around the sun, and hit planet Earth. The light hit a boy called Billy and his dog, Splodge. Neela quickly turned the torch off, but the pair were sucked up by the light. They flew through space and landed near Neela. Hello, said Billy. Neela waved. Wow, said Billy. Everything's made of ice cream. Splodge licked his paw. The ice cream never melts, and nobody eats it. It's too cold here, said Neela. It will in my tummy, thought Splodge. Neela looked sad. Can you help us? She said. We need sunshine to make things grow. No problem, said Billy. Can you get us home? I have an idea. Wait there, said Neela. She got her torch, put the wrong batteries in again. Zoom! Billy and Splodge were speeding back to Earth. Billy pointed his bedroom mirror between the sun and Fliptune. The sun's rays bounced off the mirror and up onto Neela's planet. Thanks to Billy, Fliptune is not cold anymore. Splodge moves the mirror each day to keep the sun shining there. Now Neela and her friends sit in the sun and enjoy all that free ice cream. Just on a dark, dark night, the thunder went bang. Bob had a fright. Bob ran through the trees as fast as he could, into a house at the edge of the wood. We ran after Bob and into the hall. We shouted his name, but heard nothing at all. Bob. Bob. We looked in the kitchen, and there was a snake showing its fangs. What a noise we did make! Ah! We looked in the bathroom. Do you know what we saw? Eight long legs in the bath. We were glad there weren't more. We looked in the study and saw a hard shell. What was inside it? A turtle. Well, well. We looked in the lab, and there was a cat. And there on the table, a horrible rat. Shut up. We looked here for hours, and then we went home. We opened the door. There was Bob with a bone. In the front, it said, "You've won." Open it! Shouted Mum, Dahlia, and Ahmed. Dad opened it. They had won a free holiday. I hope it's to the seaside," said Dahlia. "I can swim in the sea and make sand castles." No, I hope it's a camping holiday," said Dad. "I can sleep in a tent and get lots of fresh air." No, I'd like to go on a cruise," said Ahmed. "I can watch the dolphins and eat lots of nice food." "Well, I'd like to go to a big city," said Mum. "I can go shopping and go to the theatre." Then they started to argue. They couldn't decide. Beach, camping, cruise, city. They argued until it was dark. Then the phone rang. <coughs> Dahlia answered it. Hello, this is Lucky Holidays. You've won a holiday to sunny Alexandria. That's where my grandma lives. This is Grandma. Oh, Grandma, you tricked us! You're all invited to spend your summer holiday with me. They packed their suitcases and spent two fun weeks at Grandma's. Ahmed got his nice food. Dad got his fresh air. Mum. Once upon a time, there was a young prince who lived alone with his father, the Caliph. After his mother died, the Caliph married again. But his new wife was often unkind to the prince. The caliph didn't care much, and this made the young prince very unhappy. On the fifteenth day of the month of Shaban, the sun said to his pet pigeon, "Let's not stay here any more. 
Let's run away because nobody here cares about us. So they both ran away into the jungle. After a long time, they came to a grand palace which belonged to a lonely ghoul. This is the awful ghoul's palace, said the prince, but we are very hungry and cold and he might be asleep. Let's sneak in and rest till the morning. But the ghoul wasn't asleep. He was watching them. The prince found a bed and fell asleep. When he woke up, he was surrounded by golden prison bars. He was in a jail. The ghoul said, I know all about your evil stepmother. Your father doesn't love you. I'm lonely, so I'll keep you here as my pet. The little prince pleaded with the ghoul to set him free. Finally, the ghoul growled, I'll send your pigeon home. If the caliph misses you, he'll follow the pigeon back here and save you. If not, you'll spend the rest of your life here. The pigeon raced to the caliph's palace. Since his son had run away, the caliph cried and prayed every night that he would see him before the holy month of Ramadan. On the last night of Shaban, he felt that his son was close. He opened the window and found the pigeon sitting on the ledge. He knew that he had to follow the pigeon, but it was really dark. A princess, the caliph's sister, suggested that everyone in the palace held a candle and lit the way for the grieving father. In minutes the news spread. Every man, woman and child held a candle and followed the caliph. On their way, the children sang songs to celebrate the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. The prince heard the songs and saw the light from his prison window. He knew it was his father. The ghoul was touched by the whole scene. He whispered, I was mistaken. Your father deserves a second chance. Go back home. The young prince was reunited with his father. They returned to the caliph's palace and fasted together on the first day of Ramadan. To reward his loyal subjects, the caliph gave them gold lanterns to put outside their houses. Then he ordered his ministers to light the streets and mosques with colourful lamps. Since that day, children have bought lanterns to mark the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. Inside it. He took it out. What is it? asked Sarah. It's a map. It's a map. They looked round and saw a talking parrot. Buried treasure. Buried treasure. Wow, a treasure map. Let's follow it. Maybe it's gold. Or silver. Or jewels. OK, we are here and the treasure is here. Let's go. I'll read, said the parrot. Walk 80 metres north. 1, 2, 3, 78, 79, 80. Turn right at the big coconut tree and go straight on until the crocodile pond. Cross the bridge, turn left and keep walking. Turn right in front of the big round rock. Walk straight ahead for 50 metres. 1, 2, 3, 48, 49, 50. Go through the cave. Walk straight on until the beach. Go along the beach for 200 metres. The treasure is behind the square rock. Over there! Over there! Parrot shouted. It's empty, cried Sarah. Inside there was an old note. Dear Finder, Sorry, but I took my gold. I needed to buy a new pirate ship. Bye, Captain Redbeard. Well, at least we had a nice walk, said Sanjay. Yes, and we made a new friend. They live at the zoo. Their father is the zookeeper. He has so many things to do. On Mondays they take a shower. The hippos join the fun. Then watch TV with the fish. The week has just begun.
On Tuesdays they eat breakfast with the pandas and the frogs, and eat dinner in the evening with chimps and cats and dogs. On Wednesdays they clean their teeth. The crocodile helps them brush. Then at night they ride their bikes. The rhino gives a push. On Thursdays they play football with parrots in the park. Then take a swim in the pool, the one without the shark. On Fridays they do their homework. The octopus helps too. Then play some games with their friends and run around the zoo. On Saturdays they go shopping with the kangaroos. Then come home on a big red bus and have a little snooze. On Sundays they are very tired and sleep until it's lunch. Then take a walk around the zoo and see the friendly bunch.